Hey guys and welcome to Kerbal Space Program 1.1.3 The War! My good buddy ZTech AI has arranged a small conflict between a few players and invited me along for the dubious honour of starting the proceedings. Kerbin side is of course the go-to mod for dividing up Kerbin and I have been allotted the western continent. You know, the one with the desert. Before we get on to the deployment of base defences, I think we should take a little moment to look at this map and check out what bases I actually have. You can see at the top of the map there the KSC-2, classic easter egg, if you're not aware of it in the game anyway, go and have a look. It's got all the old models from the launch sites from previous versions of the game, but in classic risk parlance, you can see that this is possibly the most exposed territory that I own. You can see that it has one, two, three, four different territories bordering onto it and we're only allowed to attack territories that are bordered well we're only allowed to take over bases that are bordering our territory down below we have the area 110011 that is of course area 51 if you are translating from binary longest runway on the map and we will make use of that to the left, we have the Green Coast, uh, sorry, Green Basin, which is threatened almost directly by Green Coast, as you can see over there in someone else's territory. And we also, of course, have Hanbert Cape and all the way down at the bottom, the shelf. My first look at Green Basin is not massively encouraging. We spawn in on top of this rocket mover, which unfortunately is actually a fixed asset, that has no way to disembark from the platform. They, obviously, this is meant for just taking off straight into orbit. Not particularly useful when you're trying to get a turret down. So I start mucking around with some sort of helicopter attachment. We've been told that in this... In this setup for war, we have been given so many parts per base that we have got. So, for this first turn, we are allowed 50 parts per base. That's uh, 250 parts to spread out amongst all our bases. But, if we use a detachable launch craft, as long as we recover those parts afterwards, they can go back into our parts bin. I do very quickly decide that helicopters are not the way forward and start working on some sort of rocket veto capabilities instead. This first design gives me a very limited window of fuel to be able to get myself over to that building over there, but I'm totally fine with that and when I explode four rocket nozzles, I'm like, you know what, I've had a few goes at this now, four parts explosion is good enough, I think I am going to live with it. And then park my turret up amongst the cluster of buildings because I do have a little bit of prior knowledge about how these combats can go down. And I found it to be very advantageous to hide amongst buildings, mainly to avoid the howitzer abuse. After the difficulties of Green Basin, I decide to leave it for a little bit. I still have many, many parts to spend over there. I can use up to 50, and so far, including the four that I blew up, I only spent 17. So that's pretty good. So what we have here is a new design of turret and a new deployment system. Uh, unfortunately, the deployment system doesn't quite work as intended, but we will get into that when I go and deploy it. One of the major problems I've got is the power consumption. Now, when I'm just being a turret and sat down not doing anything, power consumption, not really the biggest problem. Uh, and I was a little bit worried that maybe using my weapons would consume power but that's what that testing that, that just happened there was all about no using weapons does not uh consume power but dragging my great big turret around like this does consume power but once we find ourselves in a, a relatively stable position i go and decouple the deployment system and drop it down here we go deploying a second turret at area 51 which is what i'm going to call it just for convenience i could call it area 110011 but it's a little bit wordy again you can see that I've been putting my turrets right next to buildings because, well, it just, it narrows the range that people can kind of sneak up on my AI. And of course, the longest runway in the world deserves the smallest plane we can do. The two turrets weighed in at 16 parts each and this plane has 18. That brings me up to a total of 50. 
Handbird Cape, Bay of Marvels, runways, two silos, and a great big building. Anyway, I put my turret down right next to the great big building. I didn't think we really needed to go too much into the deployment of it, but you can see I did manage to break the wheels of the deployment system there. Uh, and I mentioned earlier that my deployment system wasn't exactly working as intended. You can see I have small wheels on the back. That is because I actually intended this deployment system to roll out from the underside of my turret once I had deployed it down. Didn't work quite as intended which is the phrase of the day it turns out something else that didn't quite go as intended was trying to make my way up this slope now I really didn't put enough wheels on this thing to give it the oomph to be able to make it up such a slope. Even with a run-up, I find myself in trouble. And then afterwards, once I've got myself in this little rut that I, uh, right here, I seem to be completely stuck, so I decided to deploy my turret right here. Unfortunately, once the deployment system has been recovered, one of the landing legs had actually destroyed itself, so the stability on this turret might not be the best. The shelf is quite possibly my most lush of base areas. This is, of course, because it is so far south of my desert. And the, tu the turret deployment goes absolutely smoothly. I literally have nothing to report here. So we are just going to watch the video of these turrets getting put down. And I can go, hey, look how well that went, guys. It's so smooth. So smooth. Moving on to what could be considered the juiciest target that I own, the KSC-2. Actually a little bereft of places to put turrets, but after a quick look round, I decided to put it amongst all these administrative buildings back here. Maybe storage buildings, I'm not quite sure. But thankfully there's a little diagonal line where I can shoot from. I'm pretty sure I can launch my missiles over the top of most of these buildings. This place seems relatively safe. And turret 2 goes amongst the buildings a little way down. Back at Green Basin, I have redesigned the VTOL because I decided that building right next to the launch pad was not far enough away. Indeed, I come all the way over to this other set of buildings over here. This took many, many practice runs to get down like this. Yet, even still with the practice runs, I managed to blow up a landing leg. It's disgraceful. Quick rename, recover of all the parts for the launch base, and a small nudge with my weapon and we managed to get ourselves into a semi-stable configuration so that's my deployment report and i would like to just have a few moments with you guys talking about the turret that i am using here you can see that i have basically a missile for every occasion on the outside it's not really to try and get the planes uh, it's more to provide a distraction for them uh, I also have one of each type of defense and, of course, the mammoth goalkeeper on top. This is more just a testing of the water turret. I don't know what the, my opponents are like at fighting, so I thought this would be a good all-round turret to deploy. Another thing I want to have a word with you guys about is part counts. Now, you can see here this is a 16-part turret. That means at almost every base I have deployed 32 parts, with the exception of Green Basin, where I used a different turret. Let's open it up to have a look. Yes, I would like to save and continue, because I forgot to put the, uh, the power on this one. I, I got the power on the deployed units, just not on the one that I saved. The other ones that I've been deploying are these tiny turrets. This is literally... No no missiles, nothing like that, just the goalkeeper and defences. Another thing I'd like to address is the whole way up to this, people are asking me what type of government are gonna, is going to be leading my my nation. And I, I've, all the way up to this, I've been saying, I don't know yet. I, I really don't know. I mean, I would like to bring a Twitch Yongi character back into it, but I think not. I think what we're actually going to be doing is running this as a... Uh, socialist democracy with capitalist leanings, hence the saving of so many parts. Also, the reason that I want to make it socialist democrat is because I want you guys to get involved. If we go back to the map, you can see that I have a whole host of targets around me, and next, next go, during turn one, I would obviously like to at least test one of these targets, see what their turrets are like, and stuff like that. So if you guys have an idea for a target, Drop it, drop me a line, tell me which one you want me to attack. Also, if you think there are any, uh, any areas of improvement, do also drop me a line there. Obviously, part count is important, but let me know in the comments below what you want to see. I guarantee if enough people say that, yes, this is a good idea, I will implement it because, you know... 
that is how democracies work. But yes, as I say, that is my first turn deployment. I will see you next time when we're going to do some kick ass in because that is what we do in these war programs. And I will see you then when we're going to do that. Bye.